So for this question, part A is straightforward, part B and C is where it starts to get tricky. A particle P moves on the x-axis. At time t seconds, the velocity of P is v in the direction of x increasing, where v is equal to this. And then we're trying to find the times when P is instantaneously at rest. So we're trying to find when, for part A, when v is equal to 0. So that's quite straightforward. We just set 2t squared minus 14t plus 20 equal to 0. So you could put this in your calculator now if you wanted to, or you can factorize. If you factorize, you'd get t minus 2, t minus 5, and then your two answers would be t is 2 and t is 5. And for part b, we are trying to find the greatest speed in the interval of 0 to 4 seconds. Right, so to do this, we want to sketch the graph, sketch our velocity time graph. So our velocity time graph is a quadratic. So it's also a positive quadratic, as we can see from the, the positive 2t squared. And we have the two roots, t is 2, t is 5. So our graph might look something like this, where this is 2, this is 5. So not drawn to scale at all. And we're trying to work out the greater speed in the interval of 0 to 4 seconds. So using the symmetry of this shape, so the midpoint, the lowest point, which is halfway between 2 and 5, if I find the average 2 plus 5 divided by 2, I get 3.5, which is the x-coordinate of that point. So 4 would be somewhere over here. Okay, so we're looking at this portion of the graph here, between 0 and 4 seconds. We're trying to find the greatest speed in that interval. So we have two possibilities. We have this point here, we have this point here. So remember that speed is the magnitude of velocity. So we're looking for the, either the greatest positive or the greatest negative value. So it's one of those two purple points. I'll just call this A, call this B. So let's start with point A. Point A is easy to work out. To do so, we would just set time equal to 0. So then put that into this equation here. T is equal to 0. We end up with V is equal to 20. And then for point B, well, we know the coordinate 3.5. We worked that out from finding the midpoint. If we didn't work out what the midpoint was, we could have differentiated to find that turning point. We could have also completed the square to find the turning point. But midpoint is the easiest way. We know that t is equal to 3.5. And when we put 3.5 into our velocity equation, we end up with minus 4.5. And we can see that the thing that has the greatest magnitude out of those two, 20 and 4.5, would be 20. So our answer to part B is 20 meters per second. And now for part C. So we want to find the total distance traveled by P in the interval of 0 to 4 seconds. OK, so to find out distance, we want to integrate velocity over a certain time interval. So what we wouldn't be doing here is integrating between 0 and 4. That wouldn't work. And the reason that wouldn't work is because we have both positive and negative velocities in the interval of 0 to 4 seconds. So why does that matter? If I zoom into this diagram, this graph, so, okay, so this area here is the distance traveled between 0 and 2 seconds. And this area here is the distance traveled between 0 and 4 seconds. Now when you integrate between 2 and 4 seconds, so in other words, when you get this area here, it will give you a negative quantity. This will be a positive quantity because it's above the x-axis. So areas beneath the x-axis or time axis would be negative and areas above would be positive. So when you integrate between 0 and 4, what happens is the areas get added, but this area here would be positive and this area here would be negative. So we'd be effectively taking away the two things, which isn't what we want. So instead of integrating between 0 and 4, what we would do instead is we would integrate first between 0 and 2, and then we would integrate between 2 and 4, and then we would make this second quantity here positive and then add that to the previous quantity. Okay, so we're integrating. Our velocity equation was 2t squared minus 14t plus 20. So I'll just work out what this is first before I put in any limits. So 
integrating 2t squared, so increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. 14, that becomes divide by 2, so it would be 7t squared plus 20t. I'm not going to bother with the plus c because we're going to be putting in limits. So we'll start with the limits of 2 and 0. Square brackets, limits are 2 and 0. So when we put in 2 into what we have here, we end up with 52 over 3. Put in 0, we get 0. So this overall is 52 over 3. Now we do the same thing with the limits of 4 and 2. Put in 4, we get 32 over 3. Put in 2, we get the same thing as before, 52 over 3. Take them away, you get minus 20 over 3. And now we just add the two things up as positive quantities, 52 over 3 plus 20 over 3. 72 over 3, which is the same thing as 24 meters.